Welcome, welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Well, periodically on the program, we highlight just one ministry. If you've been a long time watcher of Bay Focus, and we've been doing this show for going on 21 years, if you've been watching mm -hmm. this for that, for at least the majority of that period of time, you know that we cover quite a bit of ground in 30 minutes with multiple ministries. But now and then, I have a guest that I feel we need to devote the entire show to, and that's today. You want to stay tuned because you're going to meet evangelist R.V. Brown and his wife, Frances. And before I introduce them to you, because it, it's such a um, powerful ministry that they do, there are two books we're going to mention today. We won't have time to do thorough looks at them, at them all, but um, R.V. Brown, I'm going to give you his background in just a moment. Um, goes out and speaks everywhere, really has a heart for dads for, and for teens and re family relationships. Mm -hmm. And he's written a book called Step Up to the Plate, Dad. And then also we're going to talk about a, an absolute passion uh, that he has, and they both have, for a commission to pray for a nation. Boy, if there's ever been a time that we need prayer as a nation, uh, this is it. So we're going to talk about those things. But let me tell you a bit about R.V. Brown because... I, first, first of all, welcome, good both of you. Here, Thank you. Good to be I just here. love it when we can have a husband, wife team come on the show. You guys are partners in ministry. Um, but Francis is, is such a support to RV, and, and they minister together. But RV is the one out there, um, been preaching for years and sharing. And he's founder and president of Outreach to America's Youth. Yes. He has a BS degree from South Carolina State University. He played football. Uh, which I'm sure you can't tell, for all four <laughs> years. He taught special education for several years in Chattanooga, Tennessee public school system, mm. coached football, girls basketball, um, wrestling, baseball. Coach is just another name you can call him. Mm. He accepted Christ in 1977 and in 1988 called into full-time ministry. He does ch uh, church, speaks at churches, prisons, retreats, camps, conferences, college campuses. He does a Breaking the Chain school assemblies, the two books I told you about. Um, mm -hmm. And they reside in Tampa, Florida. He's also spoke at many um, ch uh, chapels for the NFL. Yes. And, and he's done mm -hmm. connections there. And you're going to see a little bit, too, of some of the people that are his friends, including um, former Bucks coach Tony Dungy. But you're, he's active in ministry on your own, and then you're also connected with Grace Family Church as yes. your home mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. in Tampa. RV, I want to, first of all, add, and we have a really um, <laughs> cute picture that I want to show, but first of all, so that our, our viewers get to know the two of you, um, you're partners in ministry, but you've been married for how many years, and how did you meet? 44 years. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. in May 4th, 1975, I was at a graduation with my friend, and uh, Francis was standing with this guy across the parking lot, and I thought she was with him. I said, that we recognize because we play football together. And we went over and started talking, so I didn't say anything because I thought she was with him, but that was her roommate's husband that I was talking to. So they walked away, she came back and spoke. We spoke for about a minute, <laughs> left. Cross, after the graduation, we crossed paths again. I said, I got up enough nerve to ask her for her address and phone number. She gave it to me on a piece of peanut brittle bar paper. I have that paper to this day. Do and, you really? Yeah, Aww. and there's a picture and of it in that book. And, I, and when she walked yeah. away, I told my friend, I said, I'm going to marry that girl. He said, you don't know that. I said, I'm going to marry That's my wife right there. He said, you kidding. So I worked in the bank at the time, so I set that piece of paper on my desk. And I watched it for four weeks. I said, now, I know she got a boyfriend. She's a school teacher. She get off at 4, boyfriend pick up at 7. But I get up there by 4.30. I got three hours to convince her to go out with me. So after four weeks, I got up enough nerve to drive from Columbia, South Carolina to spot me. Didn't even tell her I was coming. Call on the phone. Her mother answered the phone. And then I mean, she answered the phone. I said, Can I speak with Francis. And she said, yes. I said, this is Arthur. She said, who? RV, because we one minute she she forgot me after four weeks. I said, How can I thank her, make her think of who I am? I said, Oh, I'm David's friend, the quarterback. She said, Oh, I said, How to get to your house? She got real quiet on the phone. So the mama had to tell me how to get to the house. So she gave me seven turns how to get to the house. And I had never been in Spartanburg, South Carolina before. But I told her, I said, You come out the door and walk down the street, I'm gonna find you. 
From the interstate to her house, I found her. And when I turned the corner, I said, my God, there she is. There oh, she is. So, cue the music. So I, told her, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so I told her, I said, now listen, I don't know who you was going out with tonight, but cancer, or the three of us going out tonight. I said, so go do whatever you got to do. So we got her sitting in the yeah. house. Her mother walks into the room. So my dad always told me, when a woman walks in the room, you stand up. So I approached her mother and said, Miss Weft, is okay if I take your daughter? Now, she's 22, I'm 23 at the time. So we're grown people, so I'm asking for permission. So now I got my hooks in her mama that I'm a gentleman. Amen. So I took her out to the movies, went, had dinner, brought her back home. At the door, I just grabbed her, I just kissed her, and I said, I'll be back next week. And now <laughs> next week, it's been 46 years later. <laughs> and she's still with me. <laughs> okay, and clearly, did we show them the picture? I don't know if we've shown her the wedding picture yet. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this has been 44 years. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. are adorable there. I love that picture. And, and it mm -hmm. was um, um, just, just real, real quick, Francis, from your perspective, it was this just a, a point where I, you know, this guy, I just have to say yes or just get him, you know, he's, not, he's never going to quit. But, but tell, I know we don't, we don't have a lot of time. I want to get into the books. But, but what's it been like for 44 years of ministry? You have, you've traveled together. You guys have, have, have been together. Yeah. Give us your, your perspective. It's been, a, it's been a precious journey. Yeah. Um, yeah, we both, when we got married, we weren't saved. Yeah. And we you yeah, know, had been to good church and, and all that. But then when we, were, uh, we got married after two years, and then I moved to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and he was just starting college. And we went to Reverend Griffin's church. And Reverend Griffin, the message was, what is in hell that you would want to go there, you know? And it really got his attention. He got saved first. Then later on, I realized I needed to receive Christ. And so after that, it's, you know, it's been a great journey. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Lord's been with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, and that's a that's a um, interesting point in that you were um, you you one got saved before the other, mm -hmm. and and then but God brought you together. But one thing, I, and we're mm -hmm. gonna jump into this book right now. I got all my tools here. Um, <clears throat> step up to the plate, Dad, and I want to um, ask you, RV, because I yes. want to get both of your perspectives on this. You have a different experience level when you, when you felt the importance you had a, f a fantastic role model with your parents with your dad and when you're out there speaking to America's youth dealing with it you see the lack of this in right. people's lives and then we'll come back to you Francis because you had a little different perspective being raised by a strong single mother mm -hmm. who um, you had to uh, she had to have the strength that you, you kind of bring that side of it but mm -hmm. why did you feel it was important to write this book what what was what have you encountered what, what happened to that book, I spoke in the prison at Polk County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I got, when I got through speaking, yeah. this big African-American kid walked up to me and said, Mr. Brown, he said, how old are you? I told him how old I was at that time. He said, I've never seen my dad. Mm -hmm. He said, every time I said, at that time I weighed 320 pounds. He said, every time I see a big black man look like that, I ask myself, can that man be my dad? And I saw tears coming mm -hmm. down his face. When I got home that night, all I could do was see that guy's face. And that's what drove me to write that book. Step up to the plate, Dad. Just imagine a guy's in prison for 20 years, never seen his dad, and he's going to be locked down for 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I let him know that night, if you accept Christ, he can be free. You might be behind bars, but you can be free in your spirit. And that's what caused that book. And if you look at that book, mm -hmm. D-A-D, you see my head is under that, that A in that bird, Dad. Dad with an attitude to defend the family. Mm -hmm. See, I grew up with 17 brothers and sisters and a mom and dad. Yeah. And I watched my dad love my mom. And I, when I married my wife, I told her, I'm going to treat you like my daddy treated my mom. Yeah. He set a good example. And see, that's what's missing. The young men don't see an example. Yeah. So they think whatever they do is okay because that's all the thing. But I want young men to hear me. I want you to hear me that you get your heart right with God. You get your family right. You get focused on your family. Don't worry about the next door neighbor's family. You take care of your family. When you said yeah. I do, that means that's total responsibility to take yeah. care of your family. That's Amen. what I saw. That's what I do. In, in all your mm -hmm. experience coaching, um, and then one of the cool things about this book, too, is even working with some of the NFL players and ministering to their families mm -hmm. and, and them, um, is did you, you encounter this, you mentioned the prison, but just an out in, in every, day every day in life. the schools. Every, every day. And, when mm -hmm. I, and there's always some young man will come up 
and say something that really touched my heart. And look, I appreciate what you said. You know, you've encouraged me. I can do it. If you can gra graduate from high school with a dad that cannot read nor write and you are successful, then I can do it. What you said here today is going to change my life. My life is every day to change somebody's life every single day. I want to speak into somebody's life every day, darling, so they can see the power and the passion that I have for men, have for children, have for family. That's the key to R.V. Brown. Is my passion is that I want to see family strong again. America mm -hmm. was built on families. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, Francis, I want to ask you this, and we're going to come back with some practical, practical steps here. But Francis, too, you come at it from a, a side too that your mother had to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your your background a little bit. Well, um, we were. When I was born, it was in, I was in Welch, West Virginia, and um, my parents were married, and then we moved to Cleveland, Ohio, and then they got a divorce. And I don't know how I remember, but as a, like a four-year-old, I remember going down the steps with my dad, and then Mama comes to the door crying, and we go back up the steps to check on her, and Dad leaves. So years went by, and uh, long story short, um, when I married R.V., he said, Where, where's your dad? Because he wasn't at the wedding. I said, he's in North Carolina somewhere. He said, well, you're going to get to know your dad. So we started going there. Wow. And uh, getting wow. reconnected. So you reconnected and, and having, mm -hmm. oh, I can't think of a better person to help with, with the reconnection. But that's another, that's, that's an example. Every family has walked through mm -hmm. some of these situations where the, where the mom or the dad has to step up. But R.V., one of the one of the things that I found interesting about this is, is because of your own, tell your own dad what he poured into you. My dad told me every day, he said, son, he said, if you just stay in school, one day it's going to pay off. My mom mm -hmm. said every day, you're something special. My dad taught me how to fish. My dad taught me how to be a man. He, yeah. All he would tell me is positive mm -hmm. things, and he would say things to me. And as I got old, I realized my daddy cannot read nor write. How does he know these things? But the wisdom that my dad had. And I sat in that mule wagon with my dad from a little boy all of and the things that he said to me, son, believe in yourself. To walk right, do the right thing, and God will always bless your son. Just do the right thing. Don't mistreat people. Treat people like you want. I mean, my dad had just said things to me. I look back now and said, I what that old man know. But when, as I grew up, he, everything my dad told me became mm -hmm. true. Why? Because my dad wanted me to take another step further than he could. He couldn't read now, right? All he could yeah, do was I sign his that. name. And buddy, but the mm -hmm. things he said yeah. to me and rubbing my little round head every day and said, boy, you're <laughs> something special. Just believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I, I would listen to my dad, I had nine other brothers, eight of them older than me, yeah. and I watched all of them go to work. And I watched my daddy pour into all our life. Every day my dad would sit at the end of the table, he would say to Grace, and my daddy would talk at the table, and everybody listened. Not E.F. Hutton when he talked, but that's where my dad mm -hmm. was. When he spoke, he had a real soft voice, but yeah. he spoke with power and passion. So the things my daddy said to me encouraged me. When I married her, I told her, I said, I'm going to treat you, and I'm going to be just like my dad. I'm going to yeah. say things, be positive. Always be positive. Negative enough, my mama said, outside this house is a lot of negative things. But inside this house, we're going to love on each other and be positive with one another. My daddy taught me how to be a man. Uh, there could be no greater endorsement right there. Mm -hmm. that, that word, my mm -hmm. dad taught me how to be a man. Mm -hmm. All right, we're, we're having to fly because we have some more ground to cover. But there's two things. You would have to get this book. To, to get the book, you're gonna, you would see how R.V. Brown even became an accomplished athlete himself, the, the doors got open for him to get an ed education, mm -hmm. everything that happened and, and led him into teaching and coaching. But I want, there's a couple of quotes here. I want to give dads a couple practical things and then we're going to talk about your other book. But one of the things that you say is spend quality times to dad <laughs> with your loved ones. What are some ways that they can do that? Well, I, I take my son fishing. Uh, they can, we can go to the park. You can go to ball games. You can yeah. go to the fairgrounds. There's a lot of things you can do as a mm -hmm. family. They always want to tell dad, do things that the kids want to do. Don't do things that you want to do. Open yourself yeah. up and say, hey, what are we going to do today? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and briefly, quickly, when my wife, was, when she was teaching and I was teaching, when I started the ministry, I would take my kids off one weekend a month by myself. No mom, just me and the kids. 
Because see, when my wife was there, we had to, we had to fold the towels. We couldn't brush our teeth the way we wanted to do. So when my wife went there, the first thing we do, we jump on the bed, we tear up the bed, we tear up, we we took the packets <laughs> off that we made the room look like a camping ground. And you would hear about this later, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, but I oh, want yeah. the kids to know that they dad and they travel around yeah. the world, but how important they are to me. So mm -hmm. I had that quality time myself. So spend time talking to them, spend yeah. time fishing with them, go to the ball game and yell. I used to go to the game just yell, just to be. A, Hey, that's a bad call. I don't know what you're doing, but my, 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 my kids with this shake at my Your kids dad are going, I'm so here. glad I'm here, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter, yep, when she got yep. her little piano recital, yeah. when she turned around, I was down on my knees with a, a dozen of roses because she did a good Aww. job. And she turned around, I'm thinking she's going to say, I love you, Dad. She said, get up, Daddy, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> but these yeah. are the things that kids going to remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I want to say this Oh, yeah, the they'll dad. remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Dad, all you have is one chance yeah. to make a yeah. solid memories. And those children, we've sat down even now, as yeah. my kids are 37 and 38 years old, we have time to talk about the good time. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Well, your grandparents now, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you have yeah. you have all these multiple generations. And God has given me another let, generation. Let, let, me say this. Yeah. let me say this. Don't let the enemy steal your family and your children from you because yeah. that's what happened yeah. to my dad. And yeah. God allowed me... He, we started going to North Carolina, we're having a great time, and then his wife got really, uh, mm, what do you say, scared of me, I guess, and she, she did, she threatened to kill me. But anyway, next thing I know, they moved to Las Vegas, and I'm like, why would you move to Las Vegas? My dad was a truck driver. But anyway, uh, RV said he moved out there because of his health. He had one lung. But anyway, um, but one day, God allowed my dad to, to have me on the phone, and he said, I love you, baby. And mm. he was just boo-hooing, and God allowed me to hear that. So, wow. I, I, you know, that, that healed my heart because I yeah. knew he did yeah, love you needed, me. You he needed cared, to hear that. Yeah, you needed to hear it. The enemy you know, stole Yeah, it. and that's what we're saying. Parents watching, you need to invest. All right, we're, I'm not yeah. going to be able to let you explain these because I want to <laughs> move directions. But there were a couple of other, and I'll just read them quick from his book. On, on what dads can do to, to you know, each day mm -hmm. that you need to seek God's guidance. <clears throat> and he gave four things on hitting a home run. Remember, this is a sports guy, your coach. Pray for strength, pray for your family, pray for others, read God's word. They're self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Pray for strength, pray for your family, pray for others, read God's word. And so mm -hmm. that we have time to look at pictures, before we do the pictures, hold on, you're going to see some pictures. We just talked about praying. You, RV has another book that um, is his most recent called Commission to Pray for a Nation. Tell mm -hmm. us about this book. Well, my wife and I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Went to the, the uh, championship game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Green Bay Packers. Well, my godson plays for the Green Bay Packers. Oh, okay. And I get up 4.30 every morning because Coach Jeffries in college made us get up and go to mm -hmm. practice early in the morning. So I stayed that way. And I got up and I couldn't stay in the room because she would always get mad when I turn all the lights on. So I go up to the top of this room in the green room and it wasn't open. So I had to wait on it to open. When I found myself, I had been on my knees, bad as my knees are, for over an hour praying. And when I got up, my shirt was soaking wet because I was weeping. And God says, I am commissioning you to pray for our nation. You know, when is the last time you heard somebody say they was commissioned to do anything? And God said, I want you to pray. And I began to pray. Didn't tell her, I began to pray. And in that book, every day God was speaking to my spirit, I wrote it you down. You wrote it down. I was in, mm -hmm. I think, 27 or 30 different cities. And God says, pray. And the prayer for me is great because my mom and dad have prayed every night, yeah. darling, called all 17 children name in order. And when she get to my name, I would clog up my ear because I want to be bad like those kids. And she, but she said, chastise RV, have to do what you want. I'm right where my mom and daddy pray. So I want to tell parents, pray, yeah. pray, not only for the nation, but pray for your children. And the urgency to pray is what we need in America. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and when you get this book, mm -hmm. too, what you see is that he's written down, <laughs> like you were in all these cities, specific prayers God, God gave him. And what you can do is you can take those prayers and you can read them. You can read the book in its entirety or daily as a devotional, mm -hmm. as a devotional book. And then you turn around and you can pray his prayers or mm -hmm. you can add to your own and using his as a springboard. But boy, I'm telling you, this came out 
during our last before our last election year. It's more it's more important now than ever. Um, to to and what a great guide to have. And we're showing you at different times on the screen in the show the books so that you can you can get them. All right, we want to uh, and we'll come back if we give a minute to close out. We will here, but I want to show pictures because I want you to see RV in action. In action. We want we want to mm. show you uh, um, the. The amazing doors God's open. So we're just going to roll these, and RV, you can see them. You kind of tell us what we're seeing. As Tony Dungeon and I at the uh, Hall of Fame, when he got inducted into the uh, uh, yeah. Circle of Honor at the Buck Stadium, yeah. and that's that's another picture with his wife and I. And that we just had dinner with Tony, and that's my pastor, who's is my godson Ralph, and that's Tony, yeah. who is my one of my best friends. And uh, that's a lot of people, all of us, to coming together being together, fellowshipping together as a family. Mm -hmm. Now, that's my great nephew, who also a minister, who I helped Powerful. grow into the ministry. We had a camp. That's him. I love him, Alex. That's our marriage retreat that we've sponsored for 25 years. We have it now in San Key Island and Key Resort mm -hmm. every September, September the 17th through the 20th. We have it this year. That's me speaking at a camp that I started, okay? And that's me in, in Liberia, Africa, where I was able to lead 13,000 people to Jesus Christ. Wow. And that's at Camp Anderson, which is in Old Town, Florida. That's a youth camp that I helped build Bloodworth start. <laughs> and that's, again, another picture of our marriage retreat. That's me getting ready to fire a football team up. <laughs> that's me telling every man to get your face in the book. You talking about Facebook? We got a Facebook. That's yep. the real Facebook there. Yep. <laughs> that's me speaking to the... Uh, Tampa Bay Storms. That's me in a classroom getting ready to talk to some young men. Yep, me, there you're showing you in action. Yes, oh, that's yeah. me telling these young people, this is how you have to do, this is why you pray. Yeah. That's a husband and wife you're talking to them, sharing with. Yeah. All I do every day is to share my love for Jesus Christ and for family. And that's me in Nashville, Tennessee, where the young men, I had 130 mm -hmm. something young men, 24 of those young men made a decision for Christ. That's a prodigal son coming home. That's in my backyard. Yeah, we need to talk about it. 39 weeks I've been yeah. preaching in my backyard since COVID. Yeah, well, let's talk about it. While those pictures are rolling okay. with the backyard, tell us what you, how that happened real, real quick. Well, God told me to take my family out in the backyard to pray. So I called some of my neighbors. I called them. They came over, and we stayed, and we stayed, and they went back home. And they came back and said, RV, if you don't preach the Easter Sunday, we're going to blow the horn and you come out of your car, come out of your house in our car. I said, okay, <laughs> do it then. And they came back, and we've been doing it for 39. We, we had 27 people that Sunday in the backyard church. I, I just, I, I find that um, one of the amazing things about the pandemic, it's literally uh, afforded opportunities for ministry mm -hmm. that weren't there before. Right. Mm -hmm. That literally sure. people feel comfortable coming, standing in the, in the backyard. And we, we put them on yeah. social distance. We get yeah. them around. And, but that's how they had mm -hmm. church in the old days. Yeah. In the backyard. Yeah. I didn't know it was near the water. We had mm -hmm. church, yeah. but church is where, I, where we are. Anywhere I go, I'm in church yeah. because Christ is in me. And, and, and this is Bay focused. I want, I want the Bay to get focused quickly. That. That, that word F in focus, that means family. Yeah, family got to get focused. What's the next letter of the word focus? O. Oh. O, oh, oh. obedient. A father, if a dad is obedient, the wow. children will learn how to be obedient. What's the next letter? C. C. Develop that Christ-like character, that wow. character walking with God every day. What's the next letter? You. Understand that God died for you. Understand that the faith and the power you yeah. can have if you know Jesus Christ. What's the next letter? Uh, yes. Stand on God's word and wow. God will. And Amen. obey, believe, have a positive attitude, and yield to God. That's what oh, focus Bay means. Oh, I feel that. I'll mm -hmm. take it. Amen. I love this, RV. That is God's Amen. heart. Amen. That's his heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's the heart of the Father. And you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, what may not be known by some people, Tampa Bay was christened the Bay of the yeah. Holy Spirit yeah. Yeah. when it was first discovered, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so all right, I want to I mm -hmm. just really quick have you mm -hmm. tell our viewers, if they wanted to connect with you and, and book you for, I mean, there's so many different things you do. Um, how's the best way to, to connect with you? The You're on way. Facebook too, right? You're on social media? Mm -hmm. Social media and then... Uh, my email is rvbrown.com, rvbrown, O-T-A-Y, at gmail.com, mm -hmm. and then rvbrown.com. Oh, yeah. You're saying it, it wrong. Right. Yeah, I put all the information <laughs> on the screen. I think she, she had it right. I, that's why I, I wanted her to tell you. Let her tell you how to get in touch yeah, with me. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, ahead, we'll, yeah, we'll go ahead. Yeah, www.rvbrown.org. Yeah. 
is yeah, the website. Yeah, they can find everything there uh -huh. to be able to reach you guys. Just go to the web, go to the website. But and, go uh, there with a mission in mind yeah. that I want to learn something so I can help somebody else. Yeah. See, the key to my life that in my neighborhood, my dad was the, or did to be 103 years old. Yeah. Everybody came to my dad for wisdom. I saw my yeah. dad say something. Okay. All right, all right. That, that is absolutely a good way to end it. All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Hello, my name is Darlene Greenlee, and I want to invite you to join us each week on Bay Focus. We are going to highlight local ministries, community organizations, events, concerts. Reporter Brooke Rathmel goes behind the scenes to get the interviews you want to see. I hope you will join me each week on Bay Focus. Well, I know you've enjoyed today's program as much as I have. Boy, what a joy today it was to talk to RV and Francis Brown. Uh, when I heard about this ministry couple and, and everything RV has done, um, you know, around the nation to reach our youth and, and to reach people in prison, um, just the overall ministry that he's doing, um, I was so impressed with that. And I hope that you, if you are out there watching today, and that you haven't made the commitment to your family that you should. I hope mm -hmm. today inspired you to do that. Spend time together. Amen. Hopefully during this pandemic season, you've spent more time together in, in our homes. But really, just be that role model for your children, for your family. Thank you so much for tuning Amen. in this week. We will see you next week on Bay Focus. May God richly, richly bless you.